All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. And this one, I'm going to be doing some lost foam casting. And here's a Super E bird catcher for an iron head that you're going to be trying to do some uh, expanding foam molding. Uh, the first set here was to 3D print some negative space molds to put the expanding foam into. So here's the 3D print on my new Creality CR10. Awesome machine. I'm going to dial in the settings, but PET is always stringy. And we, the first step after that, after the machine, is we paint it with a primer setup to try and get some of those layer lines, uh, multiple coats, some sanding in between. Um, the mold actually came out not so good. I had to redesign it with a split mold. Here I've sprayed in some uh, expanding foam. I used some release material that's in PVA and wax, and it didn't seem to work. Oh no. Oh no, I locked this thing in place. That was dumb. I have to pull this off in order to split this apart, and I can't pull this off without splitting this apart. That was so stupid. I have to take the rim off the outside of this, which I just reprinted this piece, and put the rim on this guy, so that way I can pull these apart. Oh, man. Yep, so I cut the rim off, and yeah, it still didn't work, but it's always worth a try. It is fun experimenting stuff, and it's not too expensive. It just takes some time. And the release agent did not work at all. So there's that. And yeah. God damn it. That didn't work. Oh, that's why. Because I'm stupid. Oh, well. Well, we'll, we'll revisit this part. And moving on to the next one. So I set up my Avid CNC with a router and had an old Derby cover file. Um, Ended up cutting that real quick just to kind of get the CNC going. I coated this in a um, drywall spackle with water down a little bit, let it dry out, did a couple coats. This is what I used just from Ace Hardware. And here I'm um, prepping some risers, which is some old paint cans or new paint cans actually. These are going to be used to kind of raise up the aluminum that's poured in so I can get some additional weight into it. And this whole casting process is just for me to kind of get my head around it. Um, I kind of know the best method just from watching YouTube, but, um, you know, kind of want to try all these different methods. And I'm packing it in um, to the risers, but I didn't really pack it in around the part. And I think you'll see that becomes a problem later on in this pour. This is the foundry I built in the last video, and I'm still trying to tune it in a little bit. It keeps flaming out, getting mixture problems. I designed the whole burner, which is probably a mistake. I should have just bought one and put it in there, which I still can. But, you know, tune it up. It should work just fine. And it flamed out again. So, yeah, one of the fun parts of it. And since we're doing some lost foam, I got the respirator, the gloves, and a decent helmet or face mask. So if I get any splashback or anything. Here you can see down in here, we're actually getting pretty hot in there. I would say it's, you know, above 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. You see it getting a little crumbly. It'll start melting soon. I can't leave the camera there too long or else it'll melt. This is um, the scrap parts that I've actually been melting down. It's an A356, and these are scrap parts from a... Chevrolet rear subframe cross member just some recycling I've been doing but it's always fun to throw them in there and just watch them melt down into the, the liquid puddle So actually here you can see me doing a clean out and this these parts are pretty clean, honestly. The only thing I'm really scraping out of there is excess foundry material and some uh, metal slag from the crucible. So this is kind of the first step before we get to the pour part. We want to make sure we don't get any impurities in the pour. You can also see a big crack in the foundry there. That's got to be fixed. So here we go. I got some uh, lifting lifting tongs and a little pivot hook thing and this thing is pretty heavy and pretty hot so the positioning here is pretty awkward you can see I start 
pouring it in there and I'm trying to keep that puddle full by just dripping a little bit of aluminum there as it goes down and it keeps going down now there's a lot of aluminum to be put into this mold and at this point I kind of think there might be something wrong but I keep it going And this is about 20 pounds of the aluminum, so it was pretty awkward. And here I'm just making some ingots from the excess so I can use them on the next pour. Little donuts. So that doesn't look very good. Didn't come out the vent. Sank in pretty hard, but maybe the part works. We'll see. And so here, when I get the part out, you can actually start to see kind of went wrong here. I think the sand wasn't packed on hard enough because there's a lot of kind of like barnacles, almost like a ant hill casting or something where the aluminum pushed out into the sand and created this barnacle looking thing, big old turkey leg. But you know, this is a first, first run and I'm okay with it for right now. I mean, it sucks and I put some time into it, but yeah, at least uh, I can cut it apart and reuse it. So here I am cutting that piece in half. I just wanted to do some light sanding on it like I did 220. I wanted to see if there was any debris or anything bad inside of it. And yeah, looked pretty good. I mean, solid aluminum part, very soft. I cut it on a regular wood bandsaw. But we'll move on to the next lost foam casting. And for this one, I, I just spent some time on the last ones and I just wanted to get something rough so here's me carving out a Lark logo this is gonna be you know like your high school casting project spent about 30 minutes making this and it'll just be a trinket for the garage I'm using the, the pink foam from Home Depot uh, I've heard of other people using other types of styrofoam, but I had some of this kicking around, and I figured let's stick with what we know. Um, I'm just going through the process of putting the risers on. Um, right here, I'm just using some hot melt glue. I never realized it, but I kind of do a lot of grunting. Now that I film myself and I have to watch the videos, I grunt a lot. Kind of weird. So I got some old rainwater from outside and I'm diluting down this sheet uh, rock putty, the joint compound. I'm just gonna paint it on there and get a nice little shell coat. Um, you can do multiple layers, but I just decided to do one on this one. Do you guys think Kyle watches these videos? I always wonder. He says he does, but I don't think he does. What do you think? I think Kyle should, should subscribe for sure. And here I'm using the old finger dab method. I had a brush. It was all crusty, so I cut it. And then it was too short, so I was poking the foam. So this is the old get her done method. There she is. We're going to let it sit overnight, cure up, and uh, we'll get ready to bury it in some sand. So for this next one, I didn't want to use that green sand, so I, I got some more Home Depot sand. Um, this is just straight out the bag. A little bit moist, but it's not bad at all. And here you can see I'm just bearing it up to the little risers in the vent. And I'm going to add two little can risers with some Petrobon sand. 
that I recently purchased. And I'm going to use a little jigsaw. Try and get some vibration in there to push the sand into the small voids. Um, seemed to work pretty good. And this is actually a Petra Bond casting that I'll be doing a video on up very soon. But I was doing a melt, so I figured I'd get them both done at the same time. And here you can see I'm wearing some khakis, which was actually a bad idea because this was a heavy and hot pour. And I could feel it on my legs. So note to self, jeans only next time. Maybe an apron? Yeah, I'll make an apron. Maybe move the spoon out of the way too. <laughs> Jesus. So it kind of plugs up. I do the same thing as the last one. Get the puddle going. It is draining down. You can see it'll kind of suck it in there. I think once the styrofoam melts out. There's actually a point here where yeah, it just drops down in. I think maybe the vent cleared and the pressure released so it could pop in. But that's always a good sign. I got a new cookie tin, so we're making some heart ingots this time. And this is the I guess you'd call it the second attempt with the pour, third attempt with the lost foam, and part comes out. Actually looks pretty good. It doesn't have the little barnacles and everything, so I guess that's a success. You know, I don't know much about the quenching process, and if it's necessary, I mean, obviously this part's not critical, so. Looks good. Fairly happy with it. And so, you know, just working my way through all this. This with the risers off. I ended up cutting that piece off. You know, this process is just for me to learn, for you guys to enjoy, I guess, follow along. Make sure you subscribe because i got a lot better parts coming out than this dumb little garage trinket slash cell phone holder thing. Really appreciate you guys watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe. Have a good one.